A reading from Matthew 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they'd heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello friends and Happy New Year. Welcome to worship at Wilshire Baptist Church. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. We are so glad that you have tuned in to worship today. Along with worshiping online with us, you can find many ways to virtually connect with the community here at Wilshire. You can join pastoral resident Jenna Sullivan, a certified yoga instructor, for an introdu introductory virtual yoga class during the liturgical season of Epiphany. 
Um, this six-week class is geared toward um, introductory learners, and the class will take place on Sunday afternoons from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Um, you can find this class on Zoom, and you can find more information on our Tapestry newsletter. There will be a Vespers service led by our residents this Wednesday evening, January 6th at 6 p.m. on Facebook Live. We have several book club meetings that will take place on Zoom. Again, this information can be found on our Wilshire Tapestry online. Whether you are a longtime member of Wilshire or a first time visitor, we are glad that you have joined us to worship today. You can reach out to us at any time with concerns or celebrations, or to learn more about joining Wilshire at pastor at wilshirebc.org. As we continue to worship and usher in the season of Epiphany, I pray that you might find moments of light and wonder wherever you are. Will you pray with me? O oh God, who makes all things new, we give you thanks for this new year and for all the new year has come to represent. New beginnings, new opportunities, new adventures. We give you thanks for this year, but we also crossed this threshold with trepidation. Frankly, the last time we did this, it did not end well. And we know what it is like to watch the promise and hope of January shrivel and die like fruit on the vine in the face of the disturbing reality of a global pandemic, all before the end of the first quarter of the year. So we ask that you would go with us. Cross the threshold into 2021 with us, with your divine hand holding firmly onto ours. Remind us that even the vagaries of time cannot escape the expanding reach of your kingdom. Lord, redeem the time. Stir us up in this new year. Inspire and challenge us. May 2021 be as good as 2020 was bad. Bring hope and healing for this fractured, divided, diseased world. And whenever possible, help us to be your hands and feet in this good work. Give us the strength to endure a few more months of isolation so that together we may continue seeking your common good. Bless this new year, O oh God. May it be truly good and good not just for us, but for the whole of creation. Bless also Bob and Connie as they continue to recover and bless the final days of Bob Jones as he waits in hospice. Bless also with your abiding peace, David, Anne, and Andrea Cossum on the death of Anne's mother, Pat, and Lee Curl on the death of her grandmother, Betty Sue. Bless us, Lord, and keep us all of our days. Go with us into whatever waits in 2021. And as we enter this new year, may we do so with these ancient words on our lips. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The gift that can so easily be taken for granted, the ultimate act of love, a sacrificial life and death of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Even virtually, we gather now to join together as one body of Christ to partake in this great fellowship. If you'll take a moment to find elements that are available to you, come to the table where all are welcome, all are fed, all are nourished by the love of God. On the night he was betrayed, after supper, he took bread and blessed it and gave thanks for it. And then he broke it, saying, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup and he blessed it and said, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. God, may you bless these elements to nourish us, sustain us. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of life. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Epiphany is January 6th, but on this Sunday before it, we focus on the words of Isaiah and on the Magi following the star. And we're called to be a light to the nations. Epiphany means manifestation, and it refers to the way Christ is made known to the Gentiles. First, a word about our texts from the prophet and the gospel. Israel has finally returned to their homeland after 70 years of exile in Babylon. They are despondent about the conditions of the land and the feeling of lost glory. Isaiah declares the word of the Lord to them, arise and shine for your light has come. They are to lift their heads and set about the work of becoming the kind of people that are worthy of the nation's notice. But it won't happen all at once. They have to attend to the law of the Lord. And then the peoples of the earth will pay attention to their witness and see the way and will of God for the world. And then we see that the one who is himself the light of the world is born in Bethlehem. Wise men follow the the light in the night sky and it brings them to the Christ. The one who is born to Israel, the one who is himself the light of the world and now shines in and through the people. The nations that the Magi represent, the Gentiles, They bring gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and they worship the child. It's a beautiful picture. The election of Israel to be a light to the world and the coming of the Christ, who is the light through them. So, here is the question of the day as we begin this new year. If the church today can rightly claim to share in the promises of God to Israel that the glory of God will shine upon us and radiate through us so that the nations will be drawn to our light, how will we rise and shine in these darkened days of discouragement so that we can truly be an Epiphany Church. I wrote a whole sermon on this subject that addressed the state of the church in America now. I scrapped it all together and started over because it sounded more like a screed than a sermon. Guess I needed to get it out of my system, don't you know? So I have a humbler aim in this rendition and that is to call on us as a congregation to do what we can, since we can only control our own obedience. Baptists always start with the small C church before moving on to the big C church, the capital C church. So let's focus on ourselves today, Wilshire, and see what we might contribute to the renewal of the church by trying to help to renew the Baptist movement in our time. Using images of light, I want to attend to a few things, and first is this. We need to keep a steady flame. Now, I don't know if you caught it, but in our pre-recorded liturgical Christmas Eve service, we had trouble with the Christ candle. The wick had gone down to a nub and the fire kept going out. On the other hand, on the day of Epiphany, one tradition that churches observe is that they will gather up all the Christmas trees of the families in the church and they will have a big bonfire in order to celebrate the church being the light of the world. Now, a healthy church, I want to say, lives between these two extremes. 
We need the Spirit's Pentecostal power among us to keep the fire going. But we don't need bonfires of vanity that call attention to ourselves. It's the constancy of the spiritual fire that will do just fine to bring warmth and light to the world. Every church is facing the same challenge today of staying connected during these COVID restrictions. Ours is no different. It's easy to lose touch with one another when we can't come together to worship and pray and share at the table, to study the scriptures as we always have. And therefore, it's also easy to lose touch with God. Our spiritual lives require attention and our communal life is God's way of keeping the spirit alive in us. The church exists as a reminder of God's light that shines through a people dedicated to the light. The state is not the light and individuals themselves are not the light. If we remain connected to Christ and to each other in these times of discouragement, the world will have a witness. It will see a way forward through us. And that leads to the second thing, our relationship to power. The church gets its power to bear the light from Christ, not from Caesar. Now, Baptist came into being as a form of church that refused to grant spiritual power to the government or to seek power from it. We pioneered the idea of the separation of church and state, and we believe that government should establish and protect religious liberty, not just for us, but for every religion and for those who practice none. How things have changed. If you ask the average person on the street today whether Baptists stand for religious liberty, they will look at you, I suspect, as if you are crazy. Too many Baptists nowadays look to, to become power brokers in Washington. They want to control the public square. They don't want to live humbly in it. They like to go to the White House and secure the special favor of the president. These Baptists want religious liberty for themselves, and they want to deny it to others at the same time. They have fallen into the idolatry of Christian nationalism, and the light of Christ has dimmed in direct proportion to their increase of secular power. Every time a nation tries to become Christian, by use of worldly power, the light of Christ is dimmer. When in the 15th century, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain decided that they wanted to Christianize their nation, they wanted to make Spain a light to the world and to the glory of God, they took extreme measures. Their, their wrong, uh, Reconquista plan forced all Jews and Muslims to convert or be tortured or killed. They set Columbus on his journey to find gold and bring it back to them of their own accord. Their conquistadors enslaved native peoples and raped the riches of their lands. And today, you can go visit Spain's empty cathedral and find a country where the light of Christ is barely a flicker. One of our most visionary Baptists, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. got it right when he said, the church must remember that it is not the master or the servant of the state, but rather the conscience of the state. It must be the guide and the critic of the state, and never its tool. There is a reckoning coming for Baptists that have lost our way in this regard. We have to return to our calling 
to live in the light and not try to blind others by it. We do that by serving the common good, tending to the poor and marginalized in society, loving our neighbor. Our politics should be the politics of Jesus, rescuing the perishing, caring for the dying, liberating the oppressed, standing for justice, offering profligate mercy and justice to all. Which leads then to this, light is a metaphor for truth and we must be committed to the truth wherever we find it. For one thing, that means not falling for or promoting conspiracy theories based on lies or claims that are inconvenient truths uh, that, that, that we view as hoaxes instead of truth. Facts are stubborn. They should never be bent to fit what we want them to mean. Being light should mean enlightenment. Never making the clear unclear for our own benefit. If the church won't bow to the truth, then we shouldn't expect people to bow to the one who says of himself that he is the way, the truth, and the life. That also means trusting science, not denying it. Science is just another way that God makes truth known. Too many Baptists think that they have an absolute purchase on the truth because everything there is to, that they need to know about anything is found for them in the Bible. They are suspicious of science and see it as a secular means of denying the church its freedom and authority. We see some Baptist churches declaring the coronavirus a hoax and holding services without masks required only to see their own people coming down with the deadly virus. The reports of subsequent deaths even just this week, break my heart. Take away just these Baptist skeptics, not to mention all the other evangelical Christians, and we might have seen a different result in this country from the numbers of those who are infected by this illness and the deaths that have plagued us. All truth is God's truth wherever it is found, and by whatever means. Just this past week, we've seen another sad example of denying the truth, when the six presidents of the Southern Baptist seminaries declared critical race theory to be contrary to biblical truth. It must be rejected by Christians, they say, because it was developed by non-Christians using tools of social analysis. Critical race theory points out how racism is embedded in systems of law and education, economics and politics, and must be addressed as such instead of just telling people to change their hearts. Black pastors and churches are leaving the SBC in light of this rejection and are calling for the church's repentance for its complicity with white supremacy. It's about time. This is a far cry from the declaration of the English minister, John Robinson, who preached to the departing Puritans in a sermon in 1619 before they boarded the Mayflower. For I am very confident that the Lord hath more truth and light yet to break forth out of his holy word more truth and light. God is still shining more truth and light to us if we would only look and listen. We can't answer for all Christians or all Baptists, but we can answer for ourselves. We can keep a steady flame by staying connected to God and one another as a congregation. We can choose the politics of Jesus over worldly politics, and we can embrace the truth wherever we find it and whatever it costs us. 
I am proud of this church. Wilshire means something to people. It gives them hope. And it gives me hope for the church to be your pastor. Let's continue this year to rise and shine, people of God, for your light has come. Amen. Well, Happy New Year, everyone. We're starting off this year together, and we all would have hoped by now that COVID would have cleared and we would have had a, a, a path back to the sanctuary here where we could worship together, and we know it's going to be a while still, but there is hope on the horizon, isn't there? Uh, we're looking forward to this next year and seeing what God will do in our fellowship. Thank you for staying with us, staying connected, being committed, finding ways uh, to serve the Lord and to worship together. We really are grateful. Uh, no new members to announce this week, but if you would like to start out the new year by joining our church, we look forward to hearing from you. Just email me at pastor at wilshirebc.org, and we'll be glad to talk with you further. And now, as you go, you are the light of the world, and so let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to God who is in heaven. Amen.